Your money about, aren't you? Like to buy me a supper, dear? With what, madam? Oh, like that, is it? Now's our chance. Let's get him. Santiago, 33 Barclay Square, London. Come on, sir. You're going home. Gracious, what is it? Well, see if he belongs there, will you? Why, well, it's the master. Good. Then I'll hand him over. What's happened, sir? What is it? Uh, it's all right. He's not hurt badly. Uh, I'll take you, sir. Yes. And he's attacked on the street, and I found him. Well, here's his watch. Money. Necklace. Well, that's everything, I think. Oh, good night. Adios, senor. Yes, James. Oh, uh, would you pay the cab driver for me? I'm a little short. Yes, of course, sir. Run for the doctor. Please, yeah. What is it, Abbott? The young gentleman who brought you home last night, sir. Oh, let me him at once. If you please, sir. Mr. Richard Darrow. Please don't get up, sir. After last night, you can't be feeling very active. But for your effective aid, my activities would have ceased altogether. Some sherry, Templeton. Oh, I hadn't meant to stay, sir. When I brought you home last night, I left a manuscript here by mistake. A mistake which has afforded me immense pleasure. I have seldom read a book so filled with charm and imagination. Do you really mean that, sir? I'm a man of my word, Mr. Barrow. Please sit down. Well, what precisely did you do to those ruffians? Oh, well, I, I kicked one in the face and knocked the other out. 
<laughs> well, there's nothing in it, really. They were far too dazzled by that necklace of yours to see me coming. It might have dazzled even more reputable people. That necklace was worn by Queen Isabella of Castile and was entrusted to me by its present owner for an exhibition of historical gems. You are a very honest and courageous young man, Mr. Bell. Oh, I learned a bit of milling in a hard school, sir. But wouldn't it be sensible to have some sort of bodyguard when carrying valuables like that? It would, unquestionably. And as a dealer in precious stones, I'll have to think about it. You wouldn't be interested in such a post, oh, would you, I'm Mr. a Bell? writer, sir, not a bruiser. You appear to be an unusual combination of both. <laughs> Would it be inquisitive to ask how that combination came about? Oh, I hardly think that would be of interest to you, sir. But I assure you, it would be a kindness to a rather lonely man. Oh, please. But really, sir... No, no, I mean it. Senor, Perusina Logusta, Sara Su Falta. Ah, el senor habla espanol. <laughs> <laughs> yes. In fact, I'm almost a countryman of yours. You see, my mother was Spanish. Ah, buena, buena. My father was a country doctor who... Spent more on his patients than he ever got from them. I must confess, I, I don't take after him. As a boy, I ran a bit wild, spending most of my time with the gypsies. They taught me to ride, to cook gypsy fashion. Oh, some of those meals make my mouth water to think of them now. And, incidentally, to fight. I learned in a hard school that if I were to live with the gypsy lads, I had to be pretty used to with my knuckles. And I was. They found out to their cost. That time we had the run of a large estate. The owner was abroad and the house had been empty for years. It came as a shock to us to find it was occupied again. Our cherished woodlands had become a squire's preserve. I shall never forget one day. I was setting traps. My nana says you're thoroughly spoiled. And she's right. Listen, isn't that somebody whistling? Yes, I think it is. Go and see who it is. Go and see yourself. If you're afraid, of course I will. I'm not afraid. These are my father's grounds. Boy? Who are you? Is that a trap you're setting? Of course it's a trap. Then you're a poacher, and I'll have you thrown into jail. <laughs> I mean it, I will. And who are you, my lady? I'm Oriana Campadine, the lady of the manor. But you can't be. The family's in Portugal. The manor's been empty for years and years and years. Well, it isn't empty now. My papa and I have come back home. You mean to say that I won't be able to go into my woods again and bathe in the pool and set my traps? Yes, I do. Your wood. If you so much as climb through one of our fences, I'll have you thrown into the deepest dungeon where you will pine away and die. What makes you think you can do all that? Because I can. Saying so won't make it happen. It will happen. Oh, go away. <laughs> Dorothy, help, help! <laughs> I say you did. You beast! You beast! You. <laughs> I take it you and Master Francis hated each other at first sight. Thank you. Yes. His father, Sir Ernest Castleton, was very wealthy. And while Francis looked down on me for having no money, I rather despised him for having nothing else. Did the young lady carry out her threat and hand you over to the authorities? No. No, we became the best of friends. Well, that isn't exactly true. Because I think even then, children though we were, I knew she was and always would be the one woman in the world for me. Of course, Francis was my bitter rival. It used to be fun to take risks that he wouldn't think of taking. Francis always was a braggart, and Ariana knew it. Well, one day, Ariana dared him to fetch her a raven's egg from a disused quarry. He funked it, and like a fool, I said I would get it for him. It was a sheer drop of about a hundred feet. It didn't give me any more confidence to know that only Francis was on the other end of that rope. Well, anyway, I managed to reach the nest, took an egg, and was about to clamber back. Take them all. No, one's enough. Hang on, I'm coming up. No, not yet, you aren't. Do you see what I've got in my hand? Put that knife away and don't be a fool. I don't mean to be any longer. Oriana mustn't spend any more time with you. Either you give me your word you'll never try to see her again, or this knife might slip. It's a very long way to fall, isn't it? I'm coming up, Francis. Going 
give you a lesson that you'll remember all your life. Put up your hands. Francis, Francis, where are you? Here's your egg. Has he got it? Yes, he's got it. Shortly after that um, revealing episode, Ariane and her father went abroad again. He to act as charge de in Madrid and she to finish her education in Paris. When I left school, I was articled as a clerk in a lawyer's office. Oh, I hated it all. The dry as dust smell of the law, sitting in an office all day. I wanted to see the world and write about what I saw. So when my father died, I abandoned the law. And when next Ariane and I met, we were grown up. Oh, you've heard enough, surely. Indeed, I haven't. You have a gift of storytelling. I could almost believe I was witnessing the events as you described them. Well, that's what the gypsies used to say. They had adopted me as their favorite storyteller. And when the giant was hungry, he would mount a thundercloud. And filling his quiver with unflashed forks of lightning, he would bear down upon the marketplaces of the world and force all the people to give him all their richest foods. And for drink, he'd, he'd drain a barrel of wine at a single... Aren't you going to help me down? <laughs> Do you realize I've been home nearly two days and you haven't come near me? I had to seek you out, you and your gypsies. Well, I can explain. I won't listen. All right, Richard, explain. I love to watch you when you explain. Well, you've been away four years. You've grown up. People change. But in all my letters from Spain, I told you how I longed to be home. I asked you to tell me everything about our... Our uh, wood, Richard. Well, I wrote you about the wood, I am. Yes, you wrote about everything and everybody except yourself, about you and me. Why didn't you, Richard? I wanted to know everything you thought and did, and if you missed me. Didn't you miss me, Richard? Yes, I did. Then why didn't you tell me? Did you want me to tell you how beautiful you were? I can tell you that now. You're still the most beautiful girl I've ever seen. I expect a lot of men have told you that. I expect Francis told you that when you met in Madrid. He's Sir Francis now. Oh, they tell me he's got a great deal of money. You're still jealous of him, aren't you, Richard? Yes, I'm jealous of him. I'm still foolish about a great many things, Ariane. Now, never mind. Let it go. You know, that's what you're doing, running away. Just as you did from seeing me, didn't you? Yes, I did. But why? I told you before, people change. I didn't want to find out how much. Do you remember what we vowed here once, when we were very young, you and I? Of course I remember. I've had the wood to remind me. I haven't been away. To love one another forever? Don't you believe that now? You know I do. Oh, you've come back too soon, my darling. My book's not finished. What have I got to offer you? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. But I'm glad. I've had too easy a time all my life. I've been spoiled and allowed to do as I please, and that isn't good for anybody. I want to share everything with you, Richard. Not only your success, but your fight for it, too. Oh, I'd give up everything so gladly, darling, just to be with you, because I love you. You are the most disarming little person. But I adore you. Now you must make plans. Exciting plans. First, you must go to London and finish your book as soon as possible. And then, in a year's time, I'll come and join you and we'll be married. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Not so fast. We'll be married when I can support you. Not a moment sooner. And, incidentally, when I ask you. Suppose I get tired of waiting? Marry someone else? Then I should be very sorry. Oh, you're hateful and proud and independent and I love you. <laughs> Funny how a woman's love overcomes all difficulties. I told her that I'd had an offer to do some hack work for a London publisher. And we agreed that I should accept it and in my spare time write and make a name for myself. As we both thought that within one year I should become famous enough and rich enough to give her a home. 
Well, while we were making all these plans, we'd quite forgotten that the arrival of Ariana's riderless horse would throw her father into a panic. On the way back to the house, Ariana stopped to gather some flowers. And I walked ahead and overheard Francis... Of Ariana. To Ariana's You're as careless of her safety as you are of the money that you squandered at the card table. If that is your delicate way of reminding me of my death story... It isn't. But I would have you remember that I've chosen Ariana as the future Lady Castleton. You will therefore oblige me by regarding her personal safety as security for what you owe me. I shall do nothing of the kind. You are a young man who has far too lofty an opinion of your own importance. I may owe you money, but I do not owe you my daughter. What she chooses to do with her life is her own affair entirely. Heaven be praised, there she is. Bless you, child. When the cob returned with an empty saddle, I made sure they'd bring you home on a gate. I'm sorry if I distressed you, Papa. How are you, Francis? What heartless creatures women are. Your father and I have suffered the torments of Hades. <laughs> well, I think this farm lad deserves a guinea for restoring you to us. <laughs> Thank you, Francis, but I won't deprive you of it. Francis? Francis? Your yokels have odd manners in these parts, Campbell. Yokels? How dare you pretend you don't remember Richard? Richard, Rick Minnis. Oh, upon my soul, this is vastly amusing. Has the world been treating you, Daryl? None too well by the look of you. Better than I deserve. You'll pardon me. Sir, I have asked your daughter for her hand in marriage, and she has consented. Well, bless my soul. Can you afford a wife? No. Then it's a great piece of impertinence. I agree, sir, but love has deprived Ariana of her wits, and me of my humility. We were hoping that you'd give us your blessing. My dear boy, this is not altogether a surprise to me, but we must... Luncheon, sir. Carefully. Why, at any rate, Richard, you'd better stay and have some luncheon. Thank you, sir. And when is this unhappy event to take place? In about a year's time. Richard is going to London to make his fortune. Mm. In that case, we can address ourselves to our victuals without undue anxiety. Yes, yes, yes. luncheon. Come along, come along. You know, my dear... That year's up at the end of the month, and I've achieved nothing. Oh, I've written a book. Yes, but no one will read it, let alone publish it. And I've only earned enough hack writing to keep myself alive. I'm as far from making a fortune as I was on the day Oriana said she would marry me. I don't agree, Mr. Darrell. In fact, I shall hope to receive an invitation to the wedding in a few months' time. I don't think I, I quite... I understand. want your permission to arrange to have this book published. Meanwhile, I have a commission for you. I wonder if I could persuade you to convey the necklace to my client in Granada. Are you serious? Entirely. Perhaps the best way to prove it is to give you an advance on the royalties of your book and to pay you a salary while you are in my service. Visit Granada? See Spain? This is something I've dreamed of for years, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Muscles alive, alive, oh, alive, alive, oh, alive, alive, oh. That girl on the left was showing a neat ankle, Sir Francis, but not to you, Wycroft, therefore it ill becomes you to refer to it. Yes, perhaps it does. By the way, I was looking through those accounts this morning. They show a discrepancy of 15 guineas. As I haven't had the money, it is to be presumed that you have. Oh, Sir Francis, Put I... it back, Wycroft, put it back. Or well, I may be tempted to hand you over to certain authorities who have been wanting to put you back where you properly belong. We shall shortly be going down to pay our respects to Miss Campbell and express our sympathy at her father's death. Ah, the one with the engaging smile, Wycroft. Her address. Yes, Sir Francis. I wish I were the bearer of happier tidings, but there it is. A hundred a year. So little as that. Your dear father rest his soul, though one of the best of fellows, played a shocking hand at Paquette. I never knew a man who held poorer cards or made worse use of them. Well, I have no doubt that by exercising a little economy, I shall contrive to live. There will be no need for contriving if you would accept my heart and hand. But Francis... Oh, one moment, my dear. Oh, so help me, I lose the thread. As I've told you a dozen times, there's something about you no other woman ever possessed. Or oh, I wouldn't dream of risking my liberty by making unkeepable vows at the altar. But for you, my dear, there's nothing I wouldn't give or do. I love you, Ariana, and would be vastly obliged if you'd name the day. Francis, no one can have been kinder or shown more delicate feelings since Papa died. But I'm in love with someone else. Richard Darrell? Yes. Well, it's none of my business, but what you propose to live on. What he earns. Which at present is nothing. At present. But there's my hundred a year. Ah, but is there? 
I never intended telling you this, but if you're set on marrying this fellow, then I've no choice. Properly speaking, there'd be no hundred a year. There'd be a deficit. You see, your father died owing me a matter of three thousand pounds. Three thousand pounds? Uh, this is the IOU. Let me have it. Now listen, my dear. Your happiness is the only thing that counts. Could I be sure that you'd find it with Richard Darrell? I'd be the first to swallow my grief and wish you luck with all my heart. But I don't believe it, Ariana. How can I? You're throwing yourself away, my dear. It's only jealousy that makes you say that. Jealousy? Why, the man's a common adventurer waiting for a rich wife to fall into his hand like a ripe peach from the wall. That isn't true. But for his pride, we'd have been married a year ago. What's he ever done to show his love for you? Whilst I... It's not like you, Francis, to talk like this. Whilst I'm offering you my heart and my hand. Well, not exactly that. You bring me the news that I haven't a penny in the world and try to persuade me to marry you on the strength of it. <laughs> if that's how my actions appear to you... I must do something to efface the impression. Francis, what are you doing? Discharging a bankrupt, my dear, and making her a present of a hundred a year. Mr. Richard Darrow. Ariana, your letter was delayed. I came as soon as I could. My darling, I'm so very, very sorry. Good day to you, Darrow. Well, how are you, Francis? Depressed. As principal trustee of Mr. Camperton's estate, it's been my unhappy task to tell Ariana that she's practically penniless. Is this true? I'm afraid, sir. Well, I know I shouldn't say this, but it's the best news I've ever heard. You see, he prefers me as a pauper, Francis. But you won't be. Our luck's turn. I've accepted a commission that takes me to Spain, and when I get back, my book will have been published. Oh, Richard, I can't believe. May I add my congratulations? Thank you. I've already been given an advance of 200 guineas. Well, you two would like to be alone, I imagine. Thank you. I have to return to London almost immediately. Why not let me drive you? It would be a pleasure. Thank you. Mm, call for now, then. Change your tailor, I see. Though it's idle to pretend that he served you well. Thank you. Now, quickly, tell me everything. You see, Don Carlos thought I'd be the most suitable person to deliver the diamonds. Weren't you being danger doing that? They knew I was carrying it, but they weren't. Oh, I shall miss you so terribly. I do love you, sir. Look, I... I won't go. I won't go. I... I was being selfish. I hadn't thought about leaving. No, we're just being foolish. Of course you must go. Think what it means to us. And they take great care. And come back soon. Oh. Ariana, you won't see too much of Francis while I'm away, will you? You know, you are not being quite fair, Francis. Just before you came in, he did the most generous thing imaginable. You see, Papa had lost 3,000 pounds at cards to him, and just now he took the promissory notes or whatever they are and burnt them. So you see, He's not quite the rich you think he is. No. Now wait. I have something for you. There's a miniature inside it. I had it done by Isabelle in Paris. Well, it's almost as lovely as you are. Will you wear it? Until the day I die. Are you ready? Oh, yes. Yes, I, I'm coming now. Oh, I'm go now. I'll come back soon. I love you. Well, it's idle to pretend that I don't envy you, Darrell. But as the loser, I offer you my best wishes. You can keep them. What? Why didn't you hand over the IOU to the lawyers who are winding up Campadine's estate? None of your business. Oh, but it is. Because when we're married, Ariana's debts become mine. In that case, it's a pity that I burned a piece of paper worth 3,000 pounds. 300, to be precise. Before I leave for Spain, I'll send you 100 on account and give you my IOU for the remainder. I don't quite understand. 300? Rescued from the great... Speaks for itself. So you won't be seeing any more of Ariana. 
Thanks for you, Francis. I'm the one you should vent your spleen on if you can. Yes, thanks for reminding me. Ten minutes, sir. After all, lower, sir. Why, am I sharing with somebody? Yes, sir, but he's a mild sort of gentleman. I don't suppose he'll bother you much. Well, I'll take the upper then. Might unnerve him to climb so high. Pardon. May I come in? I do, by all means. The name is Meekin. Mr. Meekin. Mine's Darrell. They tell me we are sharing this cabin. Although I'm a very good sailor, with your permission, I'd like to go straight to bed. As you wish, sir. I'm going up on deck. I'll bring down your luggage, sir. What do you want? Please pardon. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that one. That's all right, Mr. Darrell. Same night tomorrow? Right. I hope you're not hurt. Not at all. I was always a great one for fisticuffs myself. Loosen these tapes for you, please. Certainly. A pleasure. <coughs> we should be seeing Finisterre any moment now. You've been to Spain before? Oh, yes, many times. Are you staying long in Malaga? Oh, just long enough to hire a guide and horses to carry me on the next stage of my journey. Thanks. That is to... Granada. Ah, an entrancing city. But for the smells, one might imagine oneself in paradise. <laughs> I may be able to help you in the matter of guides and horses. I am not without influence in Malaga. Well, thank you. I'd be most grateful. Tell me, Mr. Meekin, what exactly do you do? That's not a very easy question to answer. A variety of things, really. Yes, some pleasant, some unpleasant. But then a man must live. At least some men must. Hmm? I am perhaps best described as an agent between other men's desires and their realization. Sounds as if you're a... <laughs> I mean, as though you have no life of your own. Hardly that. But I have been instrumental in providing a lot of pleasure for others. Oh. You know, the sea gets blown every minute now, Mr. Bay. Don't you think so? Yes, doesn't it? If you cared to look, you would probably see some flying fish. Really? Right, George, you're right. Look! Uh, I'm afraid you've missed your chance. Yes, I'm very much afraid I have. You're not so lucky. There's a fiesta practically every day. Well, it looks as though we're going to be here for hours. Oh, dear, dear. It's already past the time I arranged for the guide to meet us. <laughs> to Meekin, I'm greatly indebted to you for all the trouble you've taken. Why are you doing all this for a comparative stranger? But, Mr. Darrell, I promised to see you reached your proper destination. Well, thank you. Perhaps I could better help you one day. I'm sure you will, Mr. Darrell. Oh, I always imagined 
Maine would be breathtaking. I never had any idea it'd be like this. I really hope I can do justice to it in my book. You know, Meekin, I could watch this for hours. Yes, yes, but we must get through this crowd. Now I come to think of it, perhaps it would be easier to strike a bargain if you were not present. Mm -hmm. I suggest we meet here at the cafe later tonight. All right, what time? Eleven o'clock. I'll see you then. Never have I seen her sit at a table with a man. Nonsense. What's she doing all that for? Living, senor. Like well, my mother was Spanish. I expect that's why. Why, your eyes are so dark and warm. What name does your sweetheart call you? Oh, Richard. That is Don Ricardo, huh? Yes, I suppose it is. Have you some silver for Rosanne's tambourine, senor? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, of course. Well, you've earned it. I've, I've never seen such dancing as yours. There you are. I like your money, but I like your praise better. You have not been to Spain before. Never. From what part did your mother come, Malaga? Santander. And you? From the roads, from under the stars. I am of the Uzari, people of the bay. I have my cave at Granada, but dancing feet carry a girl everywhere. In England, I have many friends among the gypsies. If I sit at your table, you have friends among the gypsies of Spain as well. Mm. Wine, Pablo. At one, senorita. Never sits at a man's table, huh? It's the first time, senor. <laughs> Glad 
that they sit at your table? Very glad. Most men here would give all, anything for Rosal to sit at the table. Oh, I don't doubt it. When they see me with you, they are mad with jealousy. Oh, I'd better sit with my back against the pillar. You are laughing at me. Oh, not at all. No, I'm just taking precautions. You do not believe they are jealous. Oh, yes, I do. I'm a jealous man myself. Of whom? Oh, someone you don't know. I do not like. Oh, that's because you don't know. I do not want to know her. If you liked her a little less from Ricardo, maybe you would like me a little more. I don't know. I hope not. But you think me pretty. Uncomfortably pretty. <laughs> that was nice, nice. Am I as pretty as her? In a different way. What sort of way? Well... The sort of way that makes you feel for an hour, maybe two hours. That you could forget her. You're a very disturbing young lady, and I refuse to answer a question like that. <clears throat> ah, here's your friend. We have supper together later, yes? Yeah? No. I have talked to the guide. He will present himself in a few moments. Oh, thank you. Charming, you are interested? If so, I'm sure something can be arranged. Red. Why not? In Malaga, everything is for sale. Honesty, virtue, even men's lives. Beg pardon? Then I'll have your bay mayor, Juan, and Diego's black gelding. The Inglés and I will reach the Dothea post for last an hour after sunrise. Now, we'll be there, but what is the reason for killing this man? Some trouble over a woman. Why should he concern us if the money is good? Ah, get out, all of you. I have to change my dress. You were just talking something over, Rosal? You two, you're talking somewhere else. Rosal. Hmm? You remember the mantle we saw yesterday? Do I? I would like to give it to you. <laughs> and the moon with it, eh? Where would you find the hundred pesetas? Well, I'm not supposed to say anything. <laughs> Who's the man, Mr. Darrow? Huh? What's your name? Suiza Senor. An excellent guy. You know the road to Granada? Every stone of it. What about horses? Already arranged for, Senor. When will the Senor be ready to start? Six o'clock? Five would be better. Uh, because of the heat of the sun. All right, five o'clock. Sit down, have a glass of wine. Uh, another glass. You are a fool, Juan. Work of that kind is more likely to bring you the garrote than a hundred percent. Well, rather than lending a horse, I take no risk. And for that, I am paid before they go. By whom? Swisher, the guide. Ah, that man.
Signore, I must speak to you. Certainly not. You're a wicked girl, and it's no use trying your wiles on me. Signor, listen. You are a friend of Don Ricardo? Yes. Sit down. If my people know, I tell you, they... Well, my dear? He is in danger. Danger? Lagrima del corazón, mi mio, lo so, mi mare. Lagrima del corazón, mi mio, lo so, mi mare. ¿Qué tiene? Me pregunto, ya no. Me quiere mi carne, mi madre, también lloró. Leave everything to me, my dear, and do not give the matter another thought. A trifling reward for an act of courage and human kindness. I trust, I sincerely trust, we will meet again. Here is the horse I promised you. Where is the money? You must ask the English. Here's your money. Where are the men who are going to do it? Raise your head when you're talking to a gentleman. Menace of a pig. Right, senor. I could have sworn that was our way. The other is shorter. The more popular, it seems. Senor? The horses passed here less than an hour ago. The senor noticed everything. Rosal! Rosal! Yes? I have brought something for you. What is it? Yes. No. And I do not mean to try. It's for you. <gasps> Mm, it is nice. How did you get it? Oh, I bought it for 75 pesetas. Uh, out of the money given to me by the English. Which English? Well, the thin one in black. Didn't I tell you that he is the one who is paying us? No. No, you did not tell me. <laughs> Make it by one. We must eat together in honor of my mentor. Oh, that. <laughs> Quick, huh? Quick. Jose! Jose, I need a horse, quickly. Do you? Well, you can't have mine. But Jose... Hey! Come back! Come back! Is this the place? Yes. One of us can watch the path from that point there and signal when the English approach us. Yes. Uh, I will do that. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing I like better than a good rough and tumble, but you understand I mustn't be seen. <laughs> Lucky we're not all so squeamish. What else do I pay you for? Better hurry. He can't be far behind. <laughs> <laughs> Someone calling? A fox, senor. The mountains are full of foxes. Single fire, we could pass. I see. We're gonna have some trouble, are we? Hey, Oswald, you gotta be.
worth having. Where's Alonso? Over the cliff. Is he dead? Wouldn't you be with a bullet through your head? The locket and that pouch. Hand them over. The money first. Here's your money. Well, he made a good fight of it. We should be grateful. Only two to share instead of four. I'm not waiting to find out. belt he was wearing, eh? Uh, yes, Sir Francis. Amazing. It must be very valuable. I meant it was amazing having got your fingers on it that you ever came back at all. I am devoted to your service, Sir Francis. Fiddle de dee. I was not unaware that both on the ship and in Malaga you were having me watched. Huh? <sighs> Discovered that, did you? I was rather pained, Sir Francis. Such a revolting creature. Come, come, hardly revolting. That black patch over his eye. Yes, well, of course, the patch is a bit... What the hell do you mean by bringing stolen property into my house? Sir Francis! I told you to get rid of someone who offended me, not to behave like a common cut purse. How dare you? I'm very sorry. I could hardly throw it away, could I? Besides, it occurred to me that you intended this trinket to grace the white throat of Miss Ariana. You're very generous to pretty ladies, Sir Francis. Pretty ladies? How dare you, little rat? How dare you mention Miss Ariana in the same breath as all the others? She's as far apart from them as the moon is from the common earth. Never have I seen one like her. A creature all fire and beauty. Princess among ladies, and yet you dare to... Quite, Sir Francis, a thousand pardons. A monstrous error of taste on my part. Here, lock the cursed thing in my safe. Did you carry out my orders about the locket? Yes, Sir Francis. Miss Oriana should receive it by tomorrow's post. I was careful to remove it before cutting Mr. Darrell's throat. You cut his throat? Yes, Sir Francis. From left to right... And rolled the body down the mountainside. It's most unpleasant. Mm, must have been. Dangerous fellow, aren't you? I always try to give satisfaction, Sir Francis, always. Yeah, so help me, you always do. But you needn't have come back with those diamonds. For nobody was watching you, Wycroft, with or without a patch over his eye. <laughs> you were nearer a fortune then than you're ever likely to be again, my boy. <laughs> a devilish amusing situation, if you ask me. Senorita, this locket was given me by a man who begged me with his last breath to deliver it to you. He died with your name on his lips. What befell after that I cannot say, for had I reported his death to the police, I might have been suspected of causing it. For the same reason, I subscribe myself with the deepest sympathy, unknown. You have all my sympathy, Ariana. A dreadful thing to have happened. But what are your plans? I have none. I understand, but there's a future that you must face. You're alone now, without protection or money. What are you going to do? What does it matter? Now that I've lost Richard, I've lost everything. Then somebody must take care of you. Build a new world for you to live in. I don't care whether I live or die. Now, perhaps, but... Time blunts the sharpest pain. Ariana, 
I'm not conceited enough to believe that I could ever take Richard's place in your heart. My heart is dead, Francis. But the one thing that I want in the world is to help you, to offer you the protection of my name and of my love. And please try to understand this, Ariana. I ask nothing in return until you're willing to give it. Francis, you've always been very good to me. But... No, don't answer now. But I warn you, I shall never stop pleading my cause with all the insistence at my command. Now, let me take you back, my dear. Ricardo mio, it is time for your prop. Wake up. Hello, Rosa. You remember I am Rosal? Come take some of this. The fever's gone, Amato mio. You sleep quietly for the first time. Oh. You feel stronger? I still can't, can't remember. What happened? You were hurt, wounded here where your hair has gone white. I nurse you back to life. You don't remember anything? No. Nothing except your desire. Where am I? How long have I been here? A long time. I bring you here. This is my cave near Granada. A long journey. So am I. Where did, did I come from? Where was I going? I can't remember. I can't remember anything. I, not even my name. I, I, Ricardo. Uh, that is your name, Ricardo. Try not to think. Try to sleep. Yes. Why are you being so good to me now? I love you. We love each other. Do we? I can't remember. But I didn't think it was you, my love. Yes, yes, it is. Try to sleep. Now look what I bring you. But you will like this, Amado Mio. You will be very pleased with me. And now you will look like a real gypsy. <laughs> They're wonderful, Rosa. Where'd you get them? I buy them from the mother of a man who does not need them anymore. Huh? He lost a dagger fight last night. But he was not wearing them. Oh. They are his base. <laughs> the draft, you okay? <laughs> <laughs> How do I look, huh? Handsome like a matador. <laughs> now put them all on. Let me see you in them. Rosal, I shall never be able to thank you for all. Well, a little later when I'm stronger. I'll... No, no, no. Do not say it. I love you. I want to give you everything. And you love me. Well, Rosal. I... Oh, soon you will. You will see.
<laughs> Neither with you. That mountain water is as cold as ice. Well, hurry up. I've cooked your breakfast. Mm, aren't you clever? Yeah, it looks horrible. <laughs> then I must cook it again. Men are all alike. I do not bring home good food for you to spoil. Stop! Stop where you are! Why? What's the matter? Quicksand. There is death all around you. What shall I do? Let patch up an to your left. Now keep to the reeds. Come straight towards me. I can't take a step without you, can I? Why must you frighten me, sir? What is I to be frightened of now? You kissed me. Hmm. Wondering why I didn't do that a long time ago. Maybe it was not until now that you know you love me. That little word means so much to you. It is the only thing that meant. You do love me, don't you? Yes, I do, Rosa. I love you. More than anyone in the world. You are my world. Pray, what is the matter, Celestine? Sir Francis, it tell me before I came in that no woman was safe in this place. But for him, he's been married for such a short time. Get oh, back just... below stairs, Celestine. Salo, pour un salo, vous êtes envoyé, salo. Oh, it's been the cover. Francis, is it true that you... Why not? The dentists make mountains out of molehills. Pretty lips were made to be kissed. A truth which you've yet to learn. What am I to understand from that? A little healthy competition sometimes brings a woman up to scratch, my dear. You like to get your own way, and so far it's you who've called the tune, Ariana, and an infernally dismal one, too. And I suggest that between us we pipe up something a little livelier. And I suggest you remember what you said to me when you asked me to marry you, and repeat it a dozen times. Ancient history is a bit of a bore, my dear. Give me time. Be gentle. Someone to whom I could turn. But from the moment I became your wife, you were a different man. On our honeymoon, you would accept no refusal. And since we came here, and I, I have refused you, you've revenged yourself on me by trying to humiliate me. Things like this happen. You've broken every promise you ever made. Yes, yes, my dear. I dare say I have broken a few promises. The kind any man makes to get the woman he's after. But surely you weren't so simple as to believe them. What a fool I was to believe you. What a fool. Possibly, but I hate to remind you that I've laid out 3,000 pounds on an investment which hasn't yet paid any dividends. You're insufferable, sir. That is as may be. Please go. It's idle to pretend that your behavior pleases me, my pet. But I know I need have no fear of your deportment at our party on the 4th. With half the quality of London coming to acclaim my bride, I should like them to think that you were happy. Happy? So do a little stock-taking, Ariana, before my patience runs out, which it's perilously near doing. Mm, time's getting on, my dear. I'll do myself the honor of coming and calling on you a little later, when you've had time to cogitate on what I've said. Until then, au revoir. Ariana, open the door. Open the door or she'll help me or regret it. Very well, my dear. I see I must find some way of instructing you in your wifely duties. Good night. Do you kiss me or the moon, Ricardo? Soon it'll be shining in here, taking the color out of everything. Just a short time ago, it was dark. Only the fire knew about us. Listen, Rosa. You can almost hear the shadows move. When you were ill, I used to dream of this night. When I could be here and know you loved me. Now my dream has come true, a mother me. It is late. Very late we should sleep. Hmm. 
you know what I want more than anything in the world? No. What? A drink. Have we any wine? For well, that I could hit you over the head with a bottle. Uh It is more cool out here. You know, it's extraordinary to know nothing about oneself, to be a nobody. I know that I am Ricardo, and in knowing that, I know nothing. You know that I love you, Ricardo. Ricardo. I don't feel like a Ricardo. What sort of man was I? How did I earn my living? Well, I might have been dependent on you for the rest of my life, no? Huh? Would that be so bad? No, but it would be wrong. There it is again. How did I learn about right and wrong? You know, sometimes I feel as though I were a little out of my mind. I suppose that's just what I am, a little out of my mind. Well, stop talking then and kiss me. Sometimes I almost know the answer. I need one thing, that's all. A word, a look, a gesture. Mm, it will all come back to you someday. Yes, but when? When I'm 18, it's too late. Too late? I feel as though I've left something unfinished. The thought haunts me. I know. I have seen you fight. I want to help, but I could do nothing. But you are better now. You do not call for her anymore. Her? In the beginning, you always called for her. Then I would be jealous. After tonight, I do not have to be jealous. I do not have to care about Orianne. Ariana. Ariana. No, 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 you're mine. You love me. You told me you loved me. Fool, fool, I was to speak her name. That is part. I want you to forget, to keep on forgetting. Mariana. So it was only a name I wanted after all. You must not remember her. Forget everyone but me. Mariana. Richard. Uh, life can't stand still forever. Apparently for months you've been thinking that it could, that we could stay up here always. I have only thought how much I loved you. Now you do not love me. It isn't a question of love, but of responsibility. A man must have his work to do. I have mine. People, all sorts of people are relying on me. I can't fail them. I don't think you'd want me to. People? You mean Ariane? I do not care how much you fail her. But it isn't just Ariana. Think, Rosal, think. They'll take me for a thief. Don Carlos trusts me. I must see him. The sooner the better. Ricardo, tell me you love me. I must know you it's love me. It's no good, Rosal. I must go. But they will kill you. Kill me? Months ago in Granada, when you were ill. I saw notices in the town. Police notices. There is a price on your head. I cannot let you go. I cannot. It's all right. They won't catch me, I promise you. Well, this makes it even more important to see Don Carlos. What if anything should happen to you? Nothing will. I've got too much to do. Well, I'm going now. Ricardo. Rosal, come here. Whatever happens, I'm coming back. You must believe that. I'm coming back. I promise. Got there. In this time? Si, senor. Only three weeks old. 
Sí, señor. Gracias. Gracias, señor. Hey. That is the house of Don Carlos, isn't it? Sí, señor. Yes, indeed, Don Carlos house. There's no one there now? No, señor. The majordomo has gone out to the market. He told me last night Don Carlos will be here in two, three weeks. Uh, well, uh, may I have a glass of wine and some writing material? Writing materials? Hmm. What you write letters with? Oh, writing materials. We oui, bien. Writing material. Gracias. Gracias, señor. Muchas I want you gracias. to press this letter. Sí, sí, señor. It's very important. Sí, sí, señor. Sin very retardo. Important. Sin retardo, señor. Uh, don't forget. No, señor. Don Carlos? No. It doesn't arrive till the end of the month. And you will stay with me till then? You still want me to? <laughs> you know I do. <laughs> Today I could doubt anything. But I told you I loved you. Yeah, a lot of good it's done you. We have been together. Have I complained, Ricardo? Well, that's the trouble. Your sense of values need readjusting. <laughs> You're wasting your time on me, Rosal. Go on. You should learn to differentiate between what's worth having and keeping and what should be thrown away. I think maybe you are a little drunk, huh? I'm more than a little drunk, Rosa. Sit down and rest a while. I get you some water from the lake. No, don't leave me. Only for a minute. Now, come and sit down near me, huh? Tell me, Rizal, what do you want most in the world, hmm? You. Is that all? Are you quite sure? Mm -hmm. Well, you shall have me. Let's get married, Rizal. Why not? <laughs> because of... <laughs> Why not? Yo, Paco, el rey de todos los gitanos, te declaro a ti, Ricardo, y a ti, Rosal, unidos en matrimonio.
किया मत That's right, Cumbermere, Lord Riffin on my right, Sir Jocelyn on my left. You have arranged the flowers beautifully. Well, it was Mrs. Meadows done them, Your Ladyship. I was never much of a hand at arranging blossoms. A curious coincidence, really, my father being a funeral furnisher. Your Ladyship. What is it, Mr. Wycroft? Sir Francis, a business engagement which makes it impossible for him to attend tonight's dinner. But that's absurd. How am I going to explain his absence to my guests? Uh, with his usual tact, Sir Francis has already let everybody know the dinner will not take place. Very well, come from here. You can clear the table. Yes, my lady. Oh, please, if I may be allowed to speak. Sir Francis, realizing your ladyship's disappointment, has arranged a little feminine company for you instead. Feminine company? I rather think they have already arrived, my lady. Going on. What's all this about? Quiet. No need to behave like a, you know, just because you happen to be one. No, what? Well, I couldn't help it. It's better than being in the chorus of the old movie. In here, girls, I know the way. Look, hot house peaches. Worth a shilling a piece if they're worth a penny. Mind your manners. Starting the wrong end first. What are you doing? Oh, what? Nothing. Lucky you got hold of me in time. Yes. Give the ladies a glass of sherry cover, Mia. But they are our guests. Yes, sir. If you would like a little sherry, ladies. Bubbly for me. What, nothing but sherry, my lord? How about a port? We usually serve port after the meal. Oh, we usually serve port after the meal, miss. Baggedy with breakfast, I suppose. Well, I must say there's plenty to drink and eat. But where are the men? Yes, where are the men? Yes, where are the men? I'm very sorry. I'm afraid there won't be any. We must do the best we can without. And where did you spring from? I was here all the while. You didn't come with our lot. You're not one of us. I belong to the party just the same. Huh. That's what you say. We don't like people we don't know. No, no we don't. don't. That we don't. There's plenty has found out to their cost. Come on, girls. Let's have our hair down. Let's have that dress off her. Ladies. Ladies. Girls. Behave yourselves. This is Lady Castleton. I'm quite capable of introducing myself, come here. Serve dinner at once. Yes, my lady. I'm so sorry I didn't explain who I was. Do sit down, won't you? You'll do nothing of the kind. That's true, what you said about being Lady Castle. Well, of course, would I have said so otherwise? No, I don't reckon you would. I don't reckon anyone would boast about that. Oh, oh, please. One more question. Did you know we was coming here tonight? No, it was a surprise. You've come out of it like the real lady what you are. Oh, we know Sir Francis Castleton, and he's a beast. There's no other word for it. He's a beast. Well, lots of men are beasts, but, oh, he's the worst of the lot. Come on, girls. We're getting out of here. And if any of you's pinched anything, you put it back. Or I'll have your eyes out, see? And I hope you'll take my word for it that if we had have known, we wouldn't never have come. You're very sweet. Thank you. Sweet? What, me? Don't be silly. I'm just an old battle axe. Nothing more than a left. Come on, girls. Sorry, you know. And you can have your spoon back. Oh, no, no, please keep it. I wouldn't demean myself. Better have this one, too. Uh, no offense if I offer a bit of advice, dearie? No, of course not. If I was you, I wouldn't stop in this house another minute. Get back to your room. Get me past Francis and get, get back to your room. No. Francis, I said. Get 
wrong, Emily. That's where you're wrong. Completely, absolutely what? wrong. I told you I'd teach you a lesson when the first one wasn't complete. It said, was it? The law of the land allows me to give you a thrashing, and by zooming, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Well, have the courage. Haven't I? And afterwards, I warrant you'll be a bit more tolerant, a bit more generous towards me, my dear. I know that. That's better if love won't melt the ice. We'll see what loathing can do. I like to see those sparks in your eyes. Madame, in letter. Give it to me and get out. But, monsieur... Get out. Madame, it is for you. It's from Mr. Richard. His handwriting. Richard. Then he's alive. Give it to me, Francis. Give it to me. My congratulations and my sincere hope that you will be as splendidly loyal to your husband as you've been to me. Your trust and love proved so priceless as to be worthless as indeed you are, my Lady Castleton, to me. I am encouraged in the belief that I shall have the same facility in forgetting you as you have had in eliminating your once devoted lover. Well, there you are, my dear. You're welcome to it. For though he may be alive to you, you appear to be as dead to him as... as a stuffed fish in a glass case. An exhausting experience. I need a little refreshment. But I wouldn't dream of disappointing you. You will note, my dear, I have the key this time. You're alive. Alive? that I very much dislike being disturbed at this time of night. You will make an exception in my case, I trust. Oh, Sir Francis, please forgive me. It's easy to forgive a loyal and faithful servant. Thank you, Sir Francis. I value the opinion more than I can say. Why, Croft, take your mind back to the affair of Mr. Darrell. Uh, must I, Sir Francis? As I remember, he was shot by one of the gypsies. Uh, he was, he was. The bullet pierced his brain. Mm. And subsequently, to make doubly sure, you uh, finished him off. Huh? Yes, Sir Francis. With a knife. Uh, with a razor, Sir Francis. A razor. Cutting his throat from right to left. Uh, eh? From left to right, Sir Francis. You lying, filthy mongrel. Then how do you account for the fact that he's still alive and well enough to write letters to my wife? You... Sir oh, Francis, I... I told you. When the diamonds disappeared and Richard with them, I conjectured immediately that he had been robbed and was probably dead. Thank heavens that isn't so. You will help me to find him. You must, senor. That won't be too easy, my dear. You see, he's bound to be in hiding. But I don't understand. He didn't steal the necklace. Surely you don't believe that now. Of course I don't. But apparently the police do. My client sent me this. They naturally had to inform the authorities. It's unthinkable that anyone should dare to believe... You're going to Spain. Please take me with you, senor, please. You must realize what that would mean, Lady Castle. You are a married woman. You would sacrifice everything. One hour with Richard is worth anything I might sacrifice. Are you wise, my dear? In Richard's letter, there was more hatred than love. That kind of hatred is love. He needs me. I know it. The Spanish roads and stop fidgets in blast you. I was just trying to work out whether by traveling overland we would arrive before or after her ladyship. You'd oblige me by keeping her ladyship out of that dirty mind of yours. Unless the ship sunk, she's been in Granada these three days. I wonder if that's true. Of course it's true. My mind being dirty, I mean.
Well? I have failed. My client refuses the money I offered. Nothing but the return of the necklace will persuade him to withdraw the charge against Richard. But what are we going to do? A man is asking for you, senor. He would not give me his name, but said he was looking for a way through the woods. I do not know what he meant, senor. Ask the gentleman to join us here, Pedro. Yes, senor. Oh, may I? Could I? I have things to attend to which will occupy me for an hour, at least. Don Carlos wishes you to join him in the garden, senor. Hmm? Oh, yes, yes. Thank you. Richard. Diana. Darling. Oh, Richard, I knew, I felt sure it would be all right. I knew we should find each other again. Oh, my darling, I love you so much. But not enough to refuse a title and all that goes with it, huh? Richard. I must humbly apologize for coming back into your life. It must be most embarrassing for you. You do me a cruel injustice, Richard. I only married because I believed you were dead. Mm. Possibly a convenient belief in the absence of any proof. But I had proof. From whom? From you. I was told this was taken from your dead body. The locket, the locket I gave you. My dead body. Someone wrote to me saying he'd find you dying, but he'd asked for the locket to be sent to you. I was robbed, wounded, lost my memory for months. What happened there? Tell me. It's all. I still don't understand why you had to marry Francis quite so soon. I don't know. I don't know. He seemed kind and gentle, and I no longer care what became of me. In a way, I think I died too. And then your letter came. It brought me back to life again, and now it's brought me back to you. A magnificent gesture, my dear. Very fitting reward to Francis for being so kind and gentle. How dare you say that? Whether you were alive or dead, I should have left him. He changed the moment we were married. He, he became evil, Richard, evil. Sometimes I think he was almost mad. It was a nightmare. But now, now we're together again. For a brief moment. Forever. Before I left England, I wrote to Francis saying I meant to join you and asking him to divorce me. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> Stop laughing! Oh, Yana, you still to learn how seldom things happen as we hope they will. As a child, you used to look down that nose of yours, that pretty nose of yours, and boast of how you'd have me thrown into jail. Instead, I threw you into the pond. Remember? And the grubby urchin you began by despising became your best friend. And when we became old enough, we loved each other. We were to marry. But you married someone else, Oriana. And because that marriage is a failure, you come back to me. Yes. Yes, I do. But happiness isn't to be had just for the asking, Oriana. The thing you haven't realized. Why are you saying these things to me? Is it... Because you stopped loving me? No, darling, no. But you see, I'm married, too. Married? To a gypsy girl. Why not? I, too, lost the one person I wanted. Rosal saved my life after I was wounded. I owed her a debt. And you dared to berate me for my actions. You dared to blame me for what I did. You had so little faith in my love, you thought I would have married Francis while still believing you were alive. Well, what else was I to think? Think? You never bothered to think. Of course you were hurt when you heard I was married, but you never asked yourself why or tried to find out. And you knew you must have known I would have given up the world for you. Very well, then. It's simple, isn't it? Neither of us loved well enough to have faith in each other. We both married somebody else. Perhaps it was the best thing that could have happened to us. Well, there's nothing left to be said, is there? Except goodbye. Darling, darling, forgive me. I'm sorry. I love you. 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 I
What has the fool stopped for? I'll ask Sir Francis. His Excellency asks what you're such a fool as to stop for. His Excellency wanted to see the castle of Don Carlos. That's it. He says... I heard. <clears throat> well, Ariana could hardly have chosen a more charming love nest. Is that some kind of drinking place? Well, I think... Then take the luggage down to the bug run they call an inn and meet me here presently. Yes, Sir Francis. The inn. The Signor Desire? A bottle of your best and oh, serve it downwind also help me. I lay my cane across your shoulders. This is Signor Downwind. That is very good. Hmm. Oh well. Imagine that, eh? Well, Wycroft? The bed is soft, Sir Francis. The linen clean, if not spotless. I suggest that we... Oh, my gracious me! What's the matter with your gracious you? Wycroft, fetch the police. Now, keep our friend in gentle conversation till they get here. Yes, Sir Francis. Good day to you, Darrell. Got another tailor, I see. Very attractive, I may say so. It suits you. What are you doing here? Trying to recover what I've lost. Uh, by the way, how is she? Lovely as ever. She's unhappy, Francis. Very unhappy. Does she know you're here? Not yet, but I feel sure she'll be happier when she hears the news. That I very much doubt. Ah, oh, dear, dear. Has she given me as bad a character as all that? I admit my behavior was none too good, but I was never at my best when provoked. You'll uh, join me in a glass of wine. Muck, of course, we must drink something. Very good of you, but uh, strange as it may seem, I'm rather particular with whom I drink. <laughs> you see, everything went like the wedding bell so long as you were dead. But when you had the uncommon bad taste to come to life again, that fairly put the cat among the pigeons. Yes. I'd forgotten how popular my death would be with you. It's idle to pretend there was ever much love lost between us. Oh, no. Even you would hardly stoop as low as that. I'm free to confess that I did my best to make her forget you. I don't know that. It was always your way to hire outsiders to do your dirty work. We seem to be talking at cross purposes. Could this outsider have been if I could find that link? Surely, my dear Richard, the present is more important than the past. The locket. Of course, the locket. Nobody but you knew that she'd given it to me. I could have thought of that way of sending it back. Who could have taken it from me? Who? Really, Richard, I find all this dithering a bit trying to the patient. Somebody who must have known that I was making for Granada. Let's admit for the moment that Ariana is in love with you. Have you ever asked yourself how long that kind of love is likely to last? Meekin! As my wife, she enjoys a position in society that is practically unique. Meekin! That's the link. What's all this raving about links and lockets? Are you drunk or off your head? You're talking in riddles, and I confess they fail to amuse me. Clever of you to think of Spain as a safe place to get rid of a rival. I myself can't think of a safer. Francis, you rat catcher. Will you walk? Police! Police! Why are you... Get him, you fools! Get him! Shoot him down! Shoot him down! down. Oh, Sir Francis! Oh. You see, my dear, I suffer from an exaggerated sense of property. And having gone to the trouble of getting something, even though it may be rubbish, I have an awkward habit of hanging on to it. It's a habit you must change, sir, where I'm concerned. I wouldn't be too sure, my dear. I don't know how far this affair of yours has gone. But I can't believe that a spoiled darling like yourself will relish being the light of love of a cheap scamp. We shall never know. Because, you see, I'm not leaving you for Richard or any other man. I'm just leaving you, Francis. I don't quite follow this, my dear then I shall have to tell you something that will appeal to your particular sense of humor. Because I married you, Richard married someone else. A gypsy girl. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, thanks, friend. Get out! Get out! 
Very well, my dear. But I'm shortly returning to England. And... Well, I hate to remind you that you've no money of your own, but it may influence your choice between going with me as a humble and dutiful wife or stopping in Spain and earning your living in a manner for which, as I've discovered to my regret, you little, if any, talent. Good day to you both. Pedro. Ricardo, where have you been? I was afraid for you. I went to Granada. What? But why? I tried again to see Don Carlos. Did you see him? No. The police recognized me and chased me out of the town. I do not like to see you unhappy, Madame. If your innocence were proved, you would be happy again, yes? Yeah? Hmm. Yes. I dance tonight at the by Castillo. Will you come and fetch me? Well, no more trouble with the police? I do not think you will have any more trouble, Madame. All right, Rizal. I'll fetch you. I love you, Ricardo. I love you. I will make you happy. And now the police have recognized my husband, Senor. You must give him your help. My child, how can I help unless I know the real culprits? I will tell you their names. Yes? But if they know, it will mean my life. And life has become very precious to me since Ricardo was part of it. You have my promise not to disclose where I got the information. I trust you, senor. But I must be quick. I dance tonight in the town. The attack was made by members of my own tribe, the Uzari. Yes, yes. How do you know? The plan was made in my dressing room at Malaga. But you were not a party to it. I love Ricardo, senor. I try to warn him when I find the attack is paid for by the English who pretend to be his friend. The English? But who was this English? The one who took the necklace, senor. But who was he? His name? I do not know. He came with Ricardo from the ship. A small, mean man with sloping shoulders and big open eyes that means nothing. Wycroft. Wycroft! If this is true, it explains everything. I think she's speaking the truth, Oriana. Please leave us alone. Oriana! So it was you he came to see, not the senor. He is your lover. Yes, I love him. And I love him too. Very well, we both love him. But With you, Zari, when two women love one man, they fight for him. To kill. And if one of us was to die, how would that help Richard with a price on his head? His name must be cleared, and only you can do that. So that you can take him away from me? No. I promise not even to try. But if you love him, as I do, you'll do this for him. Love him. What do you know of love with your cold English ways? A great house like a prison shutting him from the sun. You don't know, Ricardo. But I know him. The light in his eyes, the fire of his lips, the strength of his arms. He is mine, I tell you. I love him. Love? You don't know the meaning of the word. You want him to waste his life living like an outcast? He's a writer. He couldn't do that. He needs freedom, freedom to travel, to see the world, not to live in some hole in a rock like a hunted animal. But he is mine, and I shall keep him. Not unless you clear his name, because if you refuse, I can, and I will, take him from you. What do you want me to do? Come to this house tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. I think maybe that's not enough. It's all I say. If you're lucky, don't not. Maybe you see yourself with a halo. You make these fine promises to give him up so he can become a great writer and glorify the name of Ariana every hour of every day. But you forget. He is not yours to give up. It is I, not you, who can give him his freedom. He is mine. Is the paella palatable, Sir Francis? Disgusting. The rice is dirty, and the bird must have died of the plague before being cooked in lamp oil. Then I'm glad you didn't ask me to join you. Lady Castletown, Your Excellency. Throw him. Well, my dear, hasn't taken you long to come to your senses. 
I hope to persuade you to come to yours. Good evening, Wycroft. You must be very fond of Spain to come here so often. As this seems to be a private discussion. But it isn't. I want you to tell us what became of the necklace Richard Darrell was carrying. A necklace, milady? I don't understand. Hold your tongue. I can't imagine, my dear, that you came here to talk in circles. If you've anything to say, please let's hear it. A little while ago, you offered me an alternative of going back with you or starving. I'm now going to offer you an alternative, and you're included in this, Wycroft, of rotting in a Spanish jail... Oh, my lady. ...or returning the diamond necklace stolen from Richard Darrell. Are you raving, my dear? I have all the facts and a witness. Witness? Witness? Yes, Roselle, a dancing girl who was present when Mr. Wycroft arranged to have Richard killed. Oh, my soul, I never heard such a cock and bull story in all my life. Very well. Take it that way if you will. But I want Richard Darrell's name clear of suspicion, and the return of the necklace is the only way to do it. Assuming that there's any truth in your accusations, which there ain't, neither alternative is very attractive. In the one instance, we go to prison, and in the other, we lose a very valuable piece of property. Can't you think of some consolation prize, Miss Yes, I can. If you'll do as I say, I'll return to England with you as your wife. I shall expect you at Don Carlos's house tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Good night. From which I take it that the girl actually exists. Yes, Sir Francis. Roselle. In that case, there appear to be very good reasons why she should cease to do so. Sir Francis. All that lives must die, as the poet says, my dear Wycroft. Passing through nature to eternity. Oh, tell that waiter fellow to get another bottle of wine. But Sir Francis, uh, this newfangled weapon, I... Little did dee, the sooner the better, Wycroft. Yes, Sir Francis. Tengo mucho pretendiente, son ricachos, aburritos. Con ninguno cambiaría el etano de mi corazón. Well, here I am, Rosal. And here am I. Hey, what on earth? Let me go, let me go. Liar, cheek. you kill me, hadn't you better tell me why? I would rather you were dead than share you with another woman. Yes, that's fair enough. Give me back my knife! Give it back to me! No. You look nicer without it. I have finished with you. I know the truth. You went to Don Carlos, pretending it was to clear your precious honor, and all the time it was to meet her. How did you know Ariana was in Spain? Because I am a fool who loved you so well, I went to Don Carlos to betray my own people that you might be safe. Do you deny you went there to meet her? I don't deny that we met, but when I went to the house, I thought Ariana was in England. Liar! Sir. I've loved Ariana almost as long as I can remember. We would have been married. Then she got the news that I was dead, and she married somebody else. When did you find this out? That day, I went to Granada to see Don Carlos. Today, you asked me to be your wife? Yes. A nice bargain I have made. I'm sorry, Roselle. But from now on, I'll keep my part of it. I give you my word, I'll never see Ariana again. Do you expect me to be grateful for that? No, but... I'd like you to think I mean it. A fine future, living with a man who loves another woman. Hurry up, Rosal, they're waiting. <laughs> I wish I would dead. Gracias. 
Duchess, if they tell me a girl named Rosales dancing at the Baila Castillo. I must have been mad to tell Francis her name. I might have known. Yes, yes, my dear, but I hope you'll be there in time. The Baila Castillo. Tell him to hurry. this time, Wycroft. There was someone with us, Sir Francis. It will have to be later. Sir. I was right, Francis. What the devil do you mean? You lay a hand on me, devil, and I'll run you through. I warn you. I look forward to this, Francis. Send for the police, Miss Stay where you are. What's the meaning of things? Stand beside us. Get down, you. Do not be sad, Donato mio. Oh, Rosal. There will be no one to look after you. Ricardo. Darling. We have been a little happy. Haven't we? Richard, they've taken Oriana.
you're much too valuable. With you as a hostage, we can command comparative safety. He's clever and quick as Sir Francis, very clever. We should try it more carefully. Sir Francis, I'm coming up. Come on, Richard. I've four shots left and then all of them for you. Well, you've wasted two already. Stay where you are. Typical of you, Francis, you swine. Don't come up, Richard. I beg of you. It's all right, Ariane. He missed his chance of killing me years ago when he didn't cut that rope. What do you mean? You've forgotten the shot that killed Rosal, didn't you?
Come back, you fool! Three words. I love you. I do too. 